Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to make a muck dyed single geode gravity dye. The hoodie was prepped like normal and I have it turned inside out. I have the front side of the hoodie facing up and using a washable marker I'm going to make or draw kind of a little area where I'd like for the center of my geode to be. This isn't going to be the shape of the geode, but just so that I don't lose where I want the center to be during the tying process, I'm going to make a mark on the sweatshirt or hoodie. Then I'm going to grab that area, lift the hoodie up off of the table, and give it a little shake so that it kind of falls naturally. And I'm going to start tying my sinew lines from where I'd like for the bottom of the geode to be. Like I said, I'm gonna make this a single geode gravity die. So I wanna leave part of the hoodie that is not tied in a geode pattern. And I'm using sinew because sinew is wax coated. So wherever I put a sinew line and I tighten it down really well, that won't allow the die underneath that line. So I should still have some white lines remaining in my design. To make it look a little bit more natural, I'm going to vary the distance between the lines of sinew and I'm not going to try to keep everything perfect. If you'll notice, I'm not smoothing out the area before I tie it. I'm just grabbing it and tying it. The messier and more wrinkled it is, actually the better the geode looks. It's a little tougher with this hoodie fabric. By the way, this is one of the Buffalo brand women's hoodies that I got at Costco. So the fabric is really soft, but because it's thicker, it doesn't hold the wrinkles as well. That's going to be great to wear, but it makes it a little tougher to make a messy fold with a geode. I'm also like messing with that end point or where I want the center of the geode to be. As I'm tying, if you'll notice, I'm kind of pushing that fabric in and trying to messy it up a little bit because I don't want the center to be perfect. I want it to be oddly shapen and more natural looking. When I get to the area that is the center of the geode, I'm going to actually take my sinew kind of down through the middle of that area. Divide the geode center into two different centers and tie small rings out on each of those areas. I hope that makes sense. Basically, I'm tying two centers in the center. Trust me, it'll be a good look right in the middle of the geode. Okay, so for this hoodie, I've decided to step out of my comfort zone and use some yellows and browns. You guys know how I feel about yellow. I, it doesn't look good on me, so I don't tie dye with it a whole lot. So the setup that I'm using is I have the shirt inside of one of the plastic wash tubs that I purchased from the Dollar Tree Dollar Store, and I have it on top of a shelving rack. This is a spare metal shelving unit that we had, and so I've just repurposed it for my tie dye. I have another container down on the second shelf to catch any of the runoff from the dye. I'm going to randomly add the colors to the various sections of the hoodie, but since some of the sections are pretty large, I'm going to add more than one color to some of the sections. So let me give you a list of the colors that I'm using. I'm using bronze, bracken, brazil nut, golden yellow, and marigold, as well as amber waves from Dharma Trading Company. Then from Pro Chemical and Dye, I'm going to use Mocha, Curry, Harvest Wheat, Mustard Yellow, and Golden Pineapple. Then over the top of everything, I'm going to put a little bit of Pro Chemical's Hollandaise. I have all the colors listed below in the description in case you lost track of what colors I was using, because I am going to use quite a few.
Once I have all the dye on the hoodie, I'm going to add a little bit of additional soda ash over the top of the dye. I'm actually going to add quite a bit of soda ash because I'm going to muck dye this one and fill up the container with ice. I want to make sure I have plenty of soda ash remaining in the hoodie after all this ice runs through it. I don't want it to rinse out all the original soda ash. Then over the top of the ice, I'm going to add a little bit of Pro Chemicals Hollandaise. This is going to hopefully fill in some of the blank spaces and just add a little extra dimension to the hoodie. So I've added some process photos of what it looked like. And if you'll notice in one of the photos, I have a little bit of water sitting on top of my ice. That's because the sprinkler system was on and I didn't realize it. So I got a little bit of additional water added in on top of the ice. So after the sprinkler system kicked in, I went ahead and laid a container lid on top of this plastic wash tub just to make sure I didn't get any more water down inside. And I just left the hoodie and allowed it to process. I left it outside for probably about a day and a half. Then I took it into my utility sink and I began rinsing it in cold water to rinse out all the soda ash. I untied the hoodie and then warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing in hot water to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. To avoid having to rinse for a long time, I went ahead and added the stopper to my sink, added some really hot water and a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent. And then I just allowed the hoodie to soak. The Blue Dawn will help neutralize the pH of the water and any of the dye that is soaked out of the hoodie won't redeposit back onto the hoodie. When the water cooled off, I changed it out and I continued that soaking process until the water was almost clear. Then I put the hoodie along with some Dharma's Professional Textile Detergent into my washing machine and I washed it using a hot water cycle. So now the hoodie's been washed and dried and this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? So, you know, I normally am not a fan of yellow, but I absolutely love this one. I think this one turned out so pretty. I love the combination of the darker yellows mixed with the browns and the color splits, and it's just a really cool looking hoodie. So do you see what I mean about the center? Do you see how the center has got more than just one center to it? It's got several different little areas. It's not just one big blob. Tying from the bottom going out toward that center instead of tying like starting at the center of the geode and tying out toward the outer edges is really a great way to avoid your geodes looking like bullseyes. When you start tying from the bottom and you tie out toward what you want to be the center, you can keep messing that center area up, like pushing it in, folding it over, doing various things to make it look more natural and not like a bullseye. But what about those color splits? I mean, and all the different color variation, I, I just think it's beautiful. I do. I mean, there's not a ton of color down on the other part of the hoodie. And the color that is down there is kind of like a grayish green color. The part that was gravity dyed. It almost looks like the rest of the hoodie's white, but it's not. I mean, it does have some color to it. It's just not a real intense color. My husband was really concerned that he had messed this thing up by leaving the sprinkler system on, but I am not disappointed at all. I think it looks beautiful. So the only thing that is not perfect on this hoodie is I have a couple little flecks of purple dye. There is just a little bit up on the hood and a little bit on one of the sleeves. And that probably came from the project that I was working on next to this one. I don't know if you remember when I was applying the dye, I had another project, which was purple on the same shelf and the wind may have blown just, I mean, one little fleck of dye over into it, but it's really not that noticeable. And I don't think it looks bad. I also really love the fact that the bulk of the geode part is on the front of the hoodie and there's not a whole lot on the back. It just barely kind of rolls around to that back corner. That wasn't necessarily intentional. It was just kind of a happy accident because, you know, I lift the hoodie up and I just kind of let it fall naturally. So that's the way it decided to fall. And 
I think it looks great. I like the fact that it's not just perfect. That's the way things are in nature. They're not always perfect. So it just looks so natural on this hoodie. I really love it. But what do you guys think? Drop me some comments down below and let me know. And if you've enjoyed watching me make this hoodie, I sure would appreciate it if you would like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.